I said to him, and we, we have to, and, and Ernie, because we part of the Little Canonical Epic, we have to, we got to do something. We have to say something because with no the CDC, that person that people were looking to, to kind of sort of take this ball and move it, these people are going. And personally, they're not going to live alone now. They didn't live alone. So, you know, not saying that they weren't concerned and they didn't work hard. I believe they did, but they didn't live here. So they don't have to deal with what we have to deal with on a daily basis. I'm Charlotte Sanders. <clears throat> I, I live at the 900 block of Wagner Avenue. Uh, work on the, in, the, in the community also, uh, 800 West Army Avenue. I've been living in Logan. Coming up will be 20, it'll be 23 years, I believe, in October. Um, and the Logan Triangle was here when I moved here. And really, I didn't know it because I'm on way from the other end, but as I started getting involved in my community, um, I was made aware of the issue that we had with the Logan Triangle. So. I'm Helen Hutchins, a long-term resident of the Logan area. In fact, I lived on the block that started the, uh, the sinking homes for way over 20 years, and it's been way too long that the triangle has been left alone. So I'm excited about this opportunity that Logan is given again, and really want to see, um, see it through. This has been way too long for such a nice, nice product. We're going to block. Um, I still live in Logan, but on the other side. Uh, I'm a homeowner. My husband and I, don't nobody give us no money for nothing. So I ain't in the pocket of nobody. You heard me? We sent our child to college on our money. So can't nobody fire me. Can't no, I, you know, I don't owe none of these city council. I don't owe them nothing but the love. So seriously, because enough is enough. And somebody has to do something to keep this, to move this to keep it moving, and it should be the folks that live in this community. We should be tired of looking at the way it look. Every time somebody come out here, and you say, oh, you go to a meeting, oh, I live in Logan. Is that where the triangle is? That's embarrassing. That's all it's going to be Right, they done fixed up Germantown, East Old Bay, West Old Bay, and we still have nothing. Just was watching the, the political forum yesterday, the mayoral forum, and when they talked about property assessment or something and they talk about every time about, they talk about just Kensington they talk about uh not Port Richmond you know the new names they gave these communities which was used to be North Philly but they gave a different name they talk about all these other places where they had you know gender is it gentrification gentrification they, 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 done, they done brought it up and not one person can mention like are you kidding me yeah. and some of some of the issues that we that we have had longer than some of the other communities. But they fixed them up so and you know why? Because the people got involved. And the people got tired of seeing their community uh -huh. go down. So and, and really this is where it, yes, my name is Ralph A. Brown Senior. I live at 48 on North 9th Street. And I've been there ever since 89. And I moved there, I first moved there in this house on the side. And the, I can see the neighborhood have continues to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And not so much of the neighborhood, the Logan development, the whole neighborhood of Logan. Mm -hmm. Because people have a tendency not to care of where they live. And they seem like they're interested in living where there's a lot of clutters and everything. They put trash out there. And I would like to see something done. Absolutely. I, like I say, I, right, I'm right across the street from the Logan Drive. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, it's, it's sad, you know, it's something to be done. But uh, nobody won't do anything, especially if he's in charge. Nobody wants to
to talk about what, you know, ask the community, what would you like to see? We done had those meetings and we gave our input and we gave our input and still, we, you know, it's, it's nothing. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. well, if they say that it is contaminated, yes. why are they still going down eight feet in the ground? Now, how long ago was this? It was a, no more than a month ago. Okay, so so that's interesting because, like I said, Mr. Abernathy from the Redevelopment Authority said to me that it was something that they, they started kind of sort of talking about the little train. Yeah, so maybe that's what they're this doing. This is a fact because okay. I watched it. Right, okay. I live right across the street and I watched it. And okay. I talked, and I talked to the lady and she said someone is interested in building. Right. So if it's, the soil is contaminated, why should they have to go eight feet in the ground? That's a good question. And I can't answer it. So when, on Monday, if you are coming to the meeting. Well, you can let me know where to meet. I'm definitely going to It's going to be at Holy Trinity Church. Well, you give me an address because my memory is not good. Uh, it's a fire. It's a fire. I left the fire. So well, it's my face. Yeah. Because I definitely want to be fine. Yeah, and he will be. Someone paid big money for that. They didn't do it for free. And um, I want to just talk a little bit about how we're looking at this evening going, and hopefully this evening will be the start of a continued series of e evenings that gets us from the point that where we are now to a, to a point that, that people feel good about. And, uh, and hopefully that, that's a difference compared to maybe some of the stops and starts that have taken place in this process. But uh, just to say a couple words about 
who I am and, and, and how I got into this process, because admittedly, my, my group is called Land Health Institute, and we're relatively recent comers to this project through our, through our interaction with Paul. And Paul asked us to get involved, given the experience that we have with, with community engagement, with landscape restoration, with landscape design, that kind of thing. So we, in general, have experience in these kinds of situations. Um, we've, been, we've done a lot of community involvement, and especially I have in, in, in a variety of, of capacities over the last decade or so. We have experience doing, um, trying to get a community consensus around what do you do when a piece of land isn't being utilized to its potential? And here we have land arguably being used to right now to, to no potential, just, just kind of sitting there. And um, we also have background in, uh, in, in vacant land studies and what to do with that, and then just ecological restoration. So, um, so from my awareness as a Philadelphian, I've known of the, the Logan situation you know, ever since, whatever, ever, ever since like the last three decades. And so uh, I, I totally relate to the situation that's going on there and has gone on. And while we're aware that there's been a lot of stops and starts, maybe more um, stops than starts, and there's probably a lot of frustration, the, the, the one thing that we can objectively say is that when you have 35, 40 acres like this that's sitting there, there's, they're looked at as, from a positive standpoint, there's a whole lot of opportunity there. And that's what excites us about getting involved in something like this. And um, you know, we, we, our goal here is to use tonight, if, if we can, as a starting point. And, uh, and, and so that tonight, we're going to toss some images up on the board. I hope you'll bear with us that to us, they're, they're, they're really just they're images. There's a, there's a lot of ideas. They represent a lot of thought that's, that's gone on up until this date. But it's all concept. It's all conceptual. But the, the, the key point that, uh, that that we would like to make is for any if you take that triangle of land and and you and you want to give it like a reason for growth and a reason for sustained growth that that doesn't happen until the the community that's that's there has there's a consensus among the community members that, that they're going to be the stewards of, of whatever it is that we take on so tonight's goal is really to toss out some ideas but most importantly Turn the turn the mic over to the to the people in the room so that we can start a dialogue going. All this um, again, almost three decades. What seems to be the barrier, right? There have been so many wonderful ideas and concepts. Why is the land still empty if the, all these concepts have come? And the redevelopment authority <laughs> has done some kind of planning. We believe we're, we're not sure exactly exactly what they're they're, they're prepared. Um, and if you have inf information, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, but, but, that they surveyed it for, and they tell you that somebody's interested, but they won't give no name. But they still have spent taxpayer money to make the survey, and I think the public should know. Yeah, and that's and that's get behind the city to make them clean it up and make it look attractive because it's a jungle now. I live there. They they don't the sidewalk. You can't walk on the sidewalk. You have to walk in the middle of the street. Everything is in trash is stored there, and I call every day almost to get them to move trash. And I contact uh, Sydney Bath office, I stare down there and uh, complain about it. And there was another thing that happened not too long ago. They cleaned up this one house there on 8th Street that I had the gentleman to pull the Jersey barrier to block it off from Wyoming Avenue. But then three days they had moved it. And now they put the trash beside the house. You can't see it from Wild Avenue. Now, why did they move it? He must be paying tax on that property. There's three houses in that property, in that zone. Now, are they paying tax on it? I don't know. But something has happened because, like I said, this house, they had blocked it off, so they would put trash in. Three days, they had moved it, moved it to Jersey Bear, and they put the trash so they can't see it from the road there. That's the first thing to do, trying to get behind to clean up the area, which would make it more. Uh, my name is Jerry Ginnish. I coach youth baseball in Mount Airy and in Martin Luther King High School. And uh, there's a need for baseball fields in the area for kids to play. There's one, there's a nice one in Hunting Park, but there's more teams than there are fields. I like that idea of baseball. It's natural grass, not to 
I'm glad to see so much interest about Logan Triangle. Um, I wanted to let you all know that the Redevelopment Authority is re-engaging in the community uh, planning process that was left off by the Logan CDC, which closed its doors. So we're picking up on a neighborhood plan that they started with uh, WRT, which is a architecture and urban design firm based in Philadelphia. It's a neighborhood plan, so it basically incorporates the plan that Rachel had shown on the screen done by KSK, which was just a plan done on the triangle. So the WRT plan is going to be a larger geographic area than what was in the previous plan, but it's going to incorporate everything that was done to date. Um, I'm taking notes that I will take back to my executive director, Brian Abernathy, who's sorry he couldn't be here tonight but I am here as his representative, as well as other city representatives. Um, and we just want to let you know that uh, we're going to be re-engaging the community to finish this WRT plan in September. So there will be a community-wide uh, meeting. All of you are invited. If you want to um, be a part of it, you can come talk to me afterwards. I'll be sure to get you on the email list. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to let you know that we are here, uh, we are listening. And um, again, if you have any particular concerns, you can come talk to us. We've been looking at this for almost 30 years. I've been in that, well, not directly in that neighborhood, right across, right across the boulevard. I lived in Honey Park since 1966. Okay? So when I hear redevelopment is engaging, where have you been? <laughs> that is my question. We've been living with this. Absolutely. I have worked in that area. Mm -hmm. How dare you? How dare you? I think that, that, to me, that's disrespect to the community at large. This man has been looking at trash. Where have you been? Right. There's no sidewalks to walk on. There's okay. raccoons that's running out at night. Where have you been? And now you want to engage us with something Another group did, and they have closed up. Where's the respect for the community? I feel like you just hurt, you just stuck a knife in us. You know, I don't mean to say anything mean, but I do feel a certain kind of way. Because we have lived with this. I went in that neighborhood as a teenager. It was a mixed neighborhood. It was full of Everything was going on. I mean, you could go shopping down there. Everything was going on. It's nothing. How do you expect for the community to rally, get excited, and want to do something when we've been pushed like this for so long? This is, this is terrible. Now, I, I feel like a disrespect was done by your department. I'm sorry. I know you just worked there. <laughs> I hear you. But you know, it, it, it's been a disrespect. I hear you. And these, these, these neighbors, they, they've been there. They've looked at this every day. It was sad to see the process as people moved out. It had to be, mm -hmm. you know, moved all over the place. But then when there was nothing behind that, we lived like that. Mm -hmm. You know, our children went to school with that. We had to make a life with that. Now, I feel like this disrespect was done to that community. I'm sorry. I just had to say. Pardon me. That's, that's a simple <laughs> My name is Ralph Brock. I live at 19th Loud, right across the street from the same house. I have called redevelopment, trying to find out who was interested in building there. But as surveyor, I can't get a word out of it. Not a word. They won't even return my calls. Well, read about yeah, well, you know, I asked Yeah. Well, who was yes. well, well, you you're right. right. We're in discussions with a developer. Well, and, and the, Who's the developer? Yeah, okay. I'm okay. not allowed to say at this See, time why. We're not allowed, we allowed to say anything because this is our taxpayer's money, but nobody said allowed to say anything. What's so secretive about this? Yes, what? We paying for this. I hear you. I've been trying to get in contact, call, 
two or three numbers. I'd like to take your number, sir. Uh, you can give my thing my number. I'm willing to give it to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what is, if, if I can ask, what is the, the secret? Then what's the point of taking his number? Yeah. What are you going to tell him? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I can't, I don't have an answer to you. You kind of get nasty around with working at that pool. Um, my name is Marcus. All right, I grew up in Logan, and my family moved from the Logan Triangle in 1998. We were one of the last houses. Uh, we built Little Wyoming Avenue. Our address was 923 West Wyoming Avenue. And I, I have pictures. Remember, you know, of us playing in Logan when we were younger, and I found I came across a website and talked about what Logan was like back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, I played it pictures of us playing in Visit 96, and when I grew up, you know, on the other side of Rome Avenue, there were no houses, there was Dr. Turner's office, which surprisingly is still there, it hasn't sunk to the ground yet. So, I guess I have a few questions. The first question is, how did the neighborhood get to the point of where it was? For the residents that are still left, what have you guys attempted to do to attempt to stabilize the neighborhood? And for the city, since you're from the Office of Rede the, uh, Redevelopment Authority, what have you been, what can you tell us, Nicholas, what have you been told about the history of Law and the Triangle? How is this long plan going to fit in with Philadelphia 2035? Um, what are we going to do about the education of things in the neighborhood? Because there are two schools in the neighborhood, one, one which was Cook, which was under, under and road, if I'm not mistaken. And there was another school that we went to, which was the Bernie Annex Kindergarten in Love and Rockland, which I don't even know what happened with that site. So. May I say something to you? But I'm going to tell you why, in my opinion, the neighborhood changed to predominant black and they discontinued giving us service. That's the main problem. My name is Peter Goodman. Um, I grew up in the neighborhood at um, Hutchison in, in Portland. Um, I left when I was 21. It was a while ago. Um, I drive by there all the time and it's been in my heart for 30 years kind of watching what goes on. My comment is, um, I've, I've heard sort of three plans, right? I've heard the original loan plan, I've heard uh, the, the plan that you're talking about in terms of making some modifications, redevelopment authority, another set of plans. I just have a basic question, how's all that going to work together? Uh, we can't have competing plans out there doing things at the same time. We have to agree to a plan with neighbor input. That's the most important thing. You grew up there. That's your, that's your neighborhood. But it's got to be a plan, not three plans or two plans or four plans. It's got to be one plan that everybody can agree to. And I, hopefully, I think that's what we're shooting for. I think I'm projecting, okay. So my question is, if the community is valued, mm -hmm. Why is it the Redevelopment Authority has talked to a developer, the community does not know, and I'm going to take a leap of faith here and suggest that Cindy Bass also does not know that the developer is in conversation with the Redevelopment Authority. So if the community is job one, where do we see it? That's what I would like right. to point out. Right. Right. Yeah, so, so. I will go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I did want to say something about the Redevelopment Authority and the representative from Cindy Bass's office. It, you know, every time I hear you talk, it's like the Redevelopment Authority is this great lord that decided, oh, we spoke to him, but we're going to go ahead and do whatever we want to do. And, and I don't see where the Redevelopment Authority is really being a servant to the community. Right. Okay? We're not the servant to the Redevelopment Authority. You know, the thing about James Dupree was mentioned. He should not have to have fought with y'all. You know, I shouldn't sit here and be frustrated when you're my servant, okay? We're not your servant. So when you say, I'm not going to tell you, it, it makes no sense. But I'm going to tell you this, and I want to piggyback on something that the gentleman back there said about the returning citizens. I'm in Kensington where I gave a house to the community. And I got 19 young boys on that block selling drugs, heavy, right near K&A, but none can put a baseboard on. So all our baseboards where the kids come and get the free lunch are just propped up against the wall. So I go on my Facebook, I say, who can put on baseboards? Who can put them up? Now, I can go to the Puerto Rican guys, they can put the baseboards on. I already know that. Eventually, I'm going to get the baseboards put on. 
But my point is, we shouldn't have to fight you because I had to call the police to arrest some of them little young brothers because they wouldn't stay away from the feeding program. And here's a plan where those guys could be learning to build small houses. But you're prote protecting a developer who's going to eventually get some money so his kids can continue to live in Lakewood, New Jersey, okay? <laughs> While our young men who are right here in the city, probably related biologically to some of these people in the room, got to be locked up. You dig what I'm saying? You know, go back and tell them, don't come here and tell us that you can't tell us who you're protecting. You dig what I'm saying? If there's a plan where these young men can build these houses and learn how to build them, then that's what we need to be doing. Okay? Not what you want to be doing. I hear you. That's leadership. Yeah. You live in the neighborhood? I live in Kensington. Well, I live in North Philly, but I have a project in Kensington. And I, I've been trying to find out about the whole small house issue. And if I got 19 young black guys who can't put baseboards on, and she's protecting a developer who came here and learned how to build houses, okay? I was working for an Israeli that was just in his 30s, okay, who was building million-dollar homes, okay? Our relatives should be building them houses, not somebody who came over here from Israel, okay, at 33, make a half a million dollars, okay? You don't protect them. You work for us. Try not to cuss. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathy Nixon, and uh, I'm a member of Beloved St. John. And we do have a community development corporation in Logan, and we are committed to that community. Uh, we have been trying to raise funds to build a community center. We did a needs assessment, we did focus groups, we did surveys to find out what the community wants. <coughs> There's a lot of unemployment in the area, and so my challenge to the Redevelopment Authority and to send the Vance's office, is how do we get funds from your organization mm -hmm. to hire young men to That's clean right. the lots, yeah, to clean the snow in the winter? It doesn't take a whole lot of money. Take the money from the development. It, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of money, and it does two things. It employs people who can't get employment elsewhere for whatever reason, age, criminal history, whatever. Work for an organization that is willing to work with the disenfranchised. People don't have to look out their door and see weeds or the sidewalk cracks. Trash. Help up trash. In the winter, kids don't have to walk in the street because right. the sidewalks aren't clean. Right. So there are ways that this can happen in a way that engages the community, gives you a little bit of breathing room to come up with a strategy because right now I don't think you have one. Because a strategy includes being open and transparent mm -hmm. so that people become your partner and not your enemy. Mm -hmm. but she, office, she got elected because people in the community voted for her. So she has an allegiance to the community. So it benefits everybody all the way around if we can figure out ways to collaborate and not view each other as enemies. Mm -hmm. Because right now in this room, there's a lot of, I'm in that camp and I'm in that camp, and that helps no one. And we all get squashed in the end. Mm -hmm. So that's a proposal that I would like to throw out. And the beloved St. John CDC is more than welcome to work with all of you, which is why I am here to find out. Hey, I was here to gather information. So you didn't hear me say anything until I listened to what was being said. And I think that's an easy fix. And I challenge the Redevelopment Authority, and I challenge Cindy Bass's office to come together and figure out what are the pots of money that can clean up a sidewalk, it doesn't take that much. What is the equipment that needs to be purchased? <coughs> Paying people at a minimum, the minimum wage. At a minimum, the minimum wage. So that people have a source of income. And then they're not going to point selling drugs. Mm -hmm. And they're not getting in trouble. And no. men feel like men because they have their own kind of mm -hmm. And they don't have to get the minimum. minimum. One thing. Yes, I agree with everything you said, except for the part about minimum wage. I said at a minimum. Yes. Yeah, they don't have to I said the at a minimum. Developers don't that, get the minimum. That's got to be the basement. You can't go lower than that, but can you go higher? Mm -hmm. The importance is to give people a living wage so they can live. That's right. When a doctor comes from prison and he has kids, many times mm -hmm. he can't even live that's with his family because they're in a housing project and he has to get a room or something. Mm -hmm. You have to give young men and young women a chance to live. 
so they don't go back to the home, so they don't sell drugs, so they don't do violence. So I know that there's enough money to not only pay people, but to do it through organizations that are going to teach them how to be young black men. That's as important as the work. Unless we change the mentality of our young men, we're always going to have that problem. This is the perfect opportunity for us to do this in conjunction with the Redevelopment Authority, with Cindy Bass's office, with your CDC, and the neighbors who would benefit from this project. That's the reality. Can I say something? Um, I'm Isaac Mesquite. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just here, just, um, you know, just, I got some fly on the wall, just learning. I just uh, was invited here on behalf of uh, CCR, BA, uh, my, my partner, Asante. And I got to say that um, well, Paul Glover, he invited me here as well. Um, bottom line, like I, I, I would hope that the, the bottom line here is because I'm hearing the language and I'm trying to really understand like what is, you know, what is, you know, what's that's being dialogue. With. But uh, the bottom line is more community involvement and unity. I mean, I, I, I hope everybody like agrees with me, agrees with me. On more community involvement and unity. I mean, so let's set aside the, the corporate, the corporate structure, the development and all that, because first of all, in order for you to do anything in somebody's neighborhood, I don't live in the Logan section. I live in the Fairmont Art Museum section. I see a lot going on over there. And there is no involvement of the community on the whole. I'm talking about black, white, pink, green, whatever. There's no involvement with everybody coming together to talk about putting a community garden and getting everybody involved in that. It's always this development team here. They're doing this and they got the um, say so on something. I'm a young black man. Where's the opportunity for my kind? Period. I, I, I mean, come on. I mean, I don't, and f first of all, that, that's, that's what's going to be the highlight for me. Because number one, if I'm going to go into my community and I want to see some changes, I want to see, I want to see the changes first with the element that's around me. And not seeing my peers on, you know, on the block shooting craps and selling drugs and just do, you know, just wasting away their life. And then we have people that's all involved in the neighborhood that don't even live in the neighborhood, or half of them nonchalant, don't really care, see them doing this, and then you're not stepping to them and saying, you're all scared, not stepping to them and saying, well, hey, let's, um, you know, let's see what we can do for them. Let's at least have some dialogue with them. Let's at least have some dialogue with their parents, their family. They've been living there for, for, for many years. And this, is, this has been going on for years. This has been going on for years. <laughs> I mean, corporate steps in. I mean, you know, eminent domain. We, you know, we hear those terms all the time. They step in. They move everybody out of the neighborhood. Because they feel like, oh, you know, they're not doing nothing with themselves. Well, it's not solely their fault. It's not solely their fault. We're not working with the community. I mean, we, we got these positions and all that, but we need to work with the community. Different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding so many different mentalities today. It seems hard. It seems challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. 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 Everything else is a challenge.